Are you wondering how to bring more native butterflies to your yard, including the magnificent monarch? This week is National Pollinator Week, and in honor of these gorgeous butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds, I'm going to offer a series of videos on how you can attract these to your yard. And first, we're going to start off with the gorgeous and charismatic monarch butterfly. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel, California Garden Got It. I'm Anna and I'm a fourth generation grower gardening in the gorgeous foothills of the Angeles National Forest outside Los Angeles, California. I love gardening and I've been raising monarch butterflies since 2015 when all I had was a 200 square foot patio. So I'm going to show you how you can help all of these gorgeous pollinators by just adding a few plants to your yard and even in a small space it's possible to have a big impact. Helping pollinators has become one of my main passions and joys in life and I actually started growing plants for pollinators before I really started growing them for myself because I love bringing these beautiful butterflies, hummingbirds, and bees to my yard. I'd love to share my garden do-it-yourself tours and events with you so don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Today I'm going to show you how to plant these monarch attractors from seed. I'm also going to show you how you can take cuttings of these as well and propagate using that way and how to maintain these milkweed plants after you plant them. Now I have ne I've never taken cuttings from this plant before, but I'm going to try it for the first time because I've heard that it's a good way to propagate and there's just a special trick that I'll show you so you can do it at home yourself. Monarch butterflies are considered special gateway species because they are so charismatic to, and so many people love them. Unlike most insects where a lot of people think, oh my gosh, creepy bug. Butterflies are renowned throughout the world and many are known for being symbols of reincarnation, rebirth, and rejuvenation. Orange butterflies, which actually look a lot like monarch butterflies, were actually depicted in the last episode of season three of Bridgerton, which I just watched and really enjoyed. There are two populations of monarch butterflies in the United States, the eastern and the western. Now the eastern monarch population unfortunately has really shown sharp signs of decline. So this past winter, Mexican authorities announced that the eastern population of the monarch butterfly count which they do every year this was the second lowest year on record since they started taking records so this is very very um it's not good news for the monarch butterfly there are great ways for you to help and you don't need a lot of space so i'm going to show you how to help in this video i freely admit that i actually have grown more plants for pollinators than i've grown for my own consumption and that's because i love seeing how quickly nature responds when you plant native plants. If you're a vegetable farmer and you say, hey, I can't grow flowers, you can grow flowers. It's actually easier than growing vegetables because flowers are, you just need them to flower. You don't need them to set fruit, right? So uh, it's actually a lot easier than growing a tomato and you can usually grow them with a lot less fertilizer, water, and soil amendments than you normally need for your vegetable garden. Your native plants Requirements are going to differ quite a bit from your vegetable garden's requirements. So you may want to plant them next to each other, adjacent to each other, so that the, they can help each other out instead of just planting them intermixed because you may not get as much success with your vegetables or your native plants because they might like different conditions. Some California native plants will actually only need water for the first two or three years. And after that, they don't need any more water and you can just let them live by rainfall alone. As an example, these Farewell to Spring, these are actually California wildflowers. And the reason why they're called Farewell to Spring is because they're one of the last flowers to bloom in the spring. And once they're done, you know that springtime is over. Obviously, I don't know where you live and I don't know exactly which plants are native to your region or endemic to your region but you can actually find out more information by going on different websites. I'm going to use, I use the Xerxes Society for a lot of my information, monarchwatch.org and the Monarch Fellowship. As always, I'm including links to all of my information so that you can use this information to find out which plants are native to your area. 
There is one other caveat if you haven't watched my other video about milkweed, and that is that it's toxic to any animal that eats it, except for the monarch caterpillar. So if you have pets, I would suggest planting it somewhere where they can't get it, like where I planted it in that planter so they can't get to that area. Not that they probably want to eat the milkweed because it doesn't taste good. It actually, um, it, it's gross, but it'll actually make uh, predators if they eat like a caterpillar or makes them throw up. So I don't, I don't know the exact toxicity of milkweed, but just be careful if you have kids or pets. Today I'll be planting the narrow leaf milkweed seeds, which is one of the most common milkweed in California and endemic to most parts of the state. However, this information will work for other types of milkweed as well because they are similar and have uh, a lot of similar requirements throughout the country. Okay, it's time to get dirty. The first thing that we're going to need today are our seeds. Now this, today I'm going to be conducting a different kind of experiment. I wanted to try and see if pre-soaking the seeds would help with germination rates. So I've soaked these seeds for about 24 hours and then I have the rest of my seeds which I have not soaked and I'll give you a nice close-up shot of those so you can see exactly how they change just in one night after being soaked. Now the soaking procedure is very simple. All you're going to do is take a plate, fold a paper towel, put it on the bottom of the plate, fold it in half, put the seeds inside the middle of the two paper towel layers, and then just add water. It's very simple and yet it, it's an effective way of stratifying your seeds. Um, that's something that you sometimes have to do because native plants, they are a little bit harder to germinate in certain cases than non-native plants. So these are the unsoaked seeds. You can see those. And these are the seeds that I've soaked. Now, I think that the seeds on the left, the soaked seeds, they do look larger and a little bit more, um, what's the word? Anyway, full of water. So then the other seeds, so hydrated, maybe. yes, hydrated. And that can really make a big difference when you're planting. We're going to see when I do my experiment, which ones are going to do better. First, I pre-moistened these trays just to make sure I filled them with about half an inch of um, this Dr. Earth's exotic blend, cactus and succulent. You can use another cactus and succulent mix or a potting mix. Um, one thing I would suggest you do that I did not do, and I'm looking at it now, and you can see all these little pieces of wood. You know, when you have these big of pieces of wood, the seeds won't necessarily germinate if they're on top of that. So this is something that you want to keep in mind of. If you use a soil sifter, you can get out these big pieces of little of bark and make sure that you'll have better germination rates. Start by planting the seeds that are um, these were pre-moistened, like I mentioned before. Now you can just scatter these across, try to make it kind of even. The goal is to transplant these after a couple of weeks. So that should be something like you can put them into individual, you can sew them into like those little six cells or that kind of thing if you have that. But I feel like for, for me, since I'm planting so many, I'd rather plant them in a tray first and have them come up and then transplant them later. So it's kind of hard to see them against the, the surface here. And you may not do it as evenly as you'd like because they are moist. So if you want, maybe you let them dry out a little bit before, but it's not really that big of a deal because we're going to be covering these up with soil anyway. So now we're just going to plant these milkweed seeds that have not been soaked. Now, um, when you get your milkweed seeds, they might have different levels of purity. These ones I noticed they have a little bit of um, plant material in them. So that's something that just to consider, um, I think I, they were, I ordered about 100 milkweed seeds. That was where those three milkweed seeds from the Monarch fellowship and you can actually get free milkweed seeds if you live in California. If you don't live in California you might have a different kind of milkweed 
Um, so you can check with the Xerxes Society. I'll include a link. Okay. So we're just going to finish planting these. And then we're going to cover them with a about a quarter inch of soil, not too much, because you want to mimic how the seeds naturally fall into the environment. Okay, so now we're just going to put soil. Oh, we have a bee friend coming over. Just lightly sprinkle the soil over the top. I really like this use of a, an old water bottle. You just cut off the top and you can reuse it again as many times as you want. It's great for soil. And you're helping the environment a little bit by reusing something. Now this is, this is not the most scientific of experiments, but I just wanted to see if we'll have a better germination rate from those soaked seeds which are on the left. I'll make sure to label them, of course, before I put them away because otherwise I won't be able to tell. Okay, so now that I've put the soil over the top, I'm just going to moisten them. I'm going to use my Wonder Waterer, which is a special type of watering wand that was recommended by the Theodore Payne Foundation. They're an expert on California native plants and one of the classes that I took from them told us to take use this Wonder Waterer and it actually works really, really well. And I'll give you a quick demonstration of how you can use it when you're planting native plants and also for your seedlings. So this is the Wonder Waterer. I'm going to include a link. I actually was not able to find this on Amazon. I was able to find a cheap imitation that did not work as well, but I got this from Johnny's Seeds. And Johnny's Seeds has a great variety of not just seeds, but a lot of gardening supplies as well. So the trick that I was shown at the California Native Plant Society is that you're actually supposed to use this hose, not like this, but upside down. And then you let the water come out. And then you hit the end of the hose. You hit that on the tray. And that helps you gently water without disturbing the seedlings. It mimics more like natural rainfall. Okay. To check and see if it has enough water, you determine how wet it is. And I actually didn't mention this earlier, but I have a top tray that has holes and then a bottom tray without holes because most of the time I'm going to water from the bottom to avoid disturbing the seeds. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then you wanna place it in a sunny area. This area does get sheltered, but it does get some wind. So when we have high winds, I would recommend bringing it into a more sheltered area. For us, that's probably underneath our olive tree in the shade and out of the wind. I admit this is not the most impressive part of my yard right now because there's actually something really special going on. Now I'll show you a video of earlier what this looked like before. But this is what milkweed looks like after you have monarch caterpillars on it. Um, once they get to the last stage, they will just keep eating and eating and eating until they're able to develop into that chrysalis, which will then change into that gorgeous butterfly. So as the temperatures warm up, they're gonna just eat all of your milkweed and it's gonna look like this. It's not gonna be the most attractive thing, but you'll see that there are leaves that will start coming back a lot of the time. That will actually produce more and more flowers, even if it's eaten by the caterpillars, but you may wanna put it around other pollinator friendly plants because it's not gonna be the most attractive. One other thing I wanna notice about maintenance of plants, the native plants, they don't really need a lot of fertilizer, so you don't need to worry about that. You can mulch them to keep the water usage down, but you don't really need to do that as well. And uh, uh, native plants, one of the best things that you can do is actually just let things go naturally. Don't rake up the leaves after they're done. You can like clean up a little bit, but don't clean up too much because you're actually going to be killing a lot of the beneficial insects that are so, so important for your garden. The Monarch Fellowship said, and I agree, that you should have at least six milkweed plants in your garden. If you have fewer than that, then what happens is that the monarch butterflies will lay their eggs. All these eggs, that's why she's staying so long there. She's laying a ton of eggs. I'm actually going to plant my milkweed closer together now to make sure that the monarchs can have a, a better access to the plants. 
but it winds up being such a great experience for you to experience this with your kids. If you want to protect your monarch caterpillars from predators, um, accidentally eating them, then you can actually get these butterfly nets to put over, um, over the plants or just, you know, use like standard hoop tunnels, depending on what your situation is, you can just cover it. And so instead of keeping things out, you're keeping them in, but they will be able to crawl away on the ground still. And that does happen occasionally. So just, you know, it's something that is a good thing to keep the milkweed in a pot, and then you can more easily contain the caterpillar as well. So now we're at the messiest part of today. We're going to be taking cuttings. If you haven't been around milkweed before, you may not know, but it's called milkweed because it exudes a white milky sap when you cut it. So this is something that you don't want on your hands. You also don't want this rooting powder on your hands. This is something that I would recommend to make sure that your rootings take hold. So you're just going to need to do this. You're gonna need rooting powder, your milkweed, sharp and disinfected clippers, and then also some water. So this is the trick to actually being able to propagate milkweed through cuttings. I have not done this before. This is my first time, but I read and did my research and I wanna show you guys the best way. And if it doesn't work, I'll tell you about that too because I'll let you know what happens here in the garden. So like I said, haven't done this before, but you wanna get about four inches of your cutting, which is usually about the width of your hand. That's usually about four inches. Um, that's the best length for taking cuttings uh, from California native plants. I learned that from the Theater Pain Foundation. Oh shoot, see, I just did this by accident. I just broke off my plant um, accidentally. This happens. So we're gonna try to take the cutting there at this point, since I already broke it there. a little bit here okay so this is already under the water okay so we're gonna just go ahead and take about a four inch piece so I'm gonna make sure I measure first so it's a nice and stiff um, to be able to uh, make sure it goes into your medium okay so we're gonna do this underwater okay that is the first time I've ever taken a cutting underwater it worked and now I'm going to dip it Take off some of the lower leaves. You don't want any of these lower leaves in, in, in the, in the meat, potting medium, so just strip those off. And then I'm gonna just go ahead. Where did my, yeah, here we go. And dip that in. Okay. Now I'm going to pop up on the screen the correct proportion of what I'm using for my rooting medium today for the cutting. It's a mixture of vermiculite and perlite, and this is the best for taking native cuttings. You may use a different kind of mixture if you're doing other kinds of cuttings. Let me stop, I think that's it. Okay, and then you're gonna water it with the Wonder Waterer. I do it upside down. You can also use the mist function. All right. We had a health scare with Buster, but he's doing so much better. You can see he's walking great now. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Thank you to the Monarch Fellowship for providing these seeds free of charge so I can be a hub and distribute free milkweed in my area. Thank you also to the Theodore Payne Foundation, the California Botanic Garden, and Tree of Life for the information on native milkweed. All three of these are great nurseries to find in Southern California for native plants and milkweed. And I also want to thank the Xerxes Society and Monarch Watch for their information in particular and the information about propagating milkweed through cuttings.